And so then, uh, you know, shot through the heart and you're to blame, darling. And then the three of us saying, you give love a bad name. And that was our first, you know, three-way fist in the air collaboration. I owe everything to Paul because he's the one that introduced me to Bon Jovi. He's the one that that opened the door and also taught me how to write stadium anthems the kiss way, which is the protagonist can never be the victim. Uh, always has to be the winner. The songs have to feel uplifting. And, you know, they're, a lot of them are tongue in cheek, like Heaven's on Fire, which we co-wrote. And also, you know, the idea of writing songs that had opposites, you know, like Heaven's on Fire and uh, Who Wants to Be Lonely, you know, like they have tension of opposites within the words, which then I applied to the song, the titles that I brought to my writing sessions with Bon Jovi. The very first song we wrote was You Give Love a Bad Name. And that was a title I had literally written on a little piece of paper in my back pocket. And, um, it wasn't five minutes into meeting John and Richie. I pull it out and I say the title and John's face lights up. I don't think I saw that many teeth in my lifetime. You know, <laughs> this big smile and we were off and running and he threw down Shot Through the Heart because he had a previous song called Shot Through the Heart. And none of us are, you know, waste a good hook, you know, so we'll just like recycle it into the next project, right? And so then, uh, you know, shot through the heart and you're to blame, darling. And then the three of us sang, you give love a bad name. And that was our first, you know, three-way fist in the air collaboration. Incredible stuff. You mentioned Paul introduced you to Bon Jovi. So how, how did all that come about then? <laughs> they, uh, bon Jovi was one of the, you know, acts in the KISS tour. Okay. And so they made friends and, you know, Paul you know, said, hey, why don't you try writing with this guy, Desmond? And so he did. But I didn't know it until recently that they had no intention of, of writing with me for Bon Jovi. Okay. They had a plan to write with me, you know, like they, I, the idea was like the hit guy, the pop guy for other artists. And then that would bring money to their coffers so that they continue touring and all of that. But after writing You Give Love a Bad Name, they didn't want to let that song go. And then we went on to write Living on a Prayer and many other songs, Bad Medicine and, you know, Keep the Faith and, you know, so many songs through, yeah. throughout the years. And uh, we've become very close. And especially with John, he's the godfather to um, my twin sons, Roman and Nero, um, who are now 21 years old. Wow. <laughs> And he's a great stuff. godfather, you know, if any anytime, you know, they ever got into trouble or anything, he would sit them down like a like a godfather from New Jersey does <laughs> and like set 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 the record straight. <laughs> You're going to listen to John Bon Jovi, definitely. Um, and you mentioned, obviously, that Living on a Prayer there. I mean, it's the name of the book. Uh, I read that you'd said it was your favorite song that you'd worked on as well. So um, tell me about how that one came about. Well, um, <clears throat> the 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 that was the second time we got together to write and we wrote in a borrowed apartment on this i was playing this old rickety upright piano uh grand piano upright grand you know it was like this yeah it you know the keys were stuck you know half of them were gone and uh they came in richie was on guitar john brought his notebooks of lyrics and he said he wanted to write a working class um, you know, kind of tale um, uh, about this, you know, couple that was having a really hard time making ends meet. And he didn't tell me at the time, but in his mind, he said he had in, in mind this couple from high school that he and Dorothea knew, Bonnie and Joe. And so I, on the other hand, you know, had um, my experience with Maria Vidal, who, who we you know, had Desmond Child and Rouge together and we lived in a one little room, you know, for four years together. And she, you know, while I wrote songs at home, she was working as a waitress in a diner called Once Upon a Stove. And her waitress name was Gina because she reminded everyone of Gina Lola Brigida. She had black hair. She was very vivacious, very sexy. And so 
I threw in, you know, Johnny and Gina because Johnny is my original name, um, John Charles Barrett, which I had changed in high school to Desmond Child. And so, you know, John said, I can't sing Johnny. That's my name. It's like, oh, right. And so we're all like looking off Johnny and like somebody, I don't know who it was, said Tommy, because it was like a, a sound like maybe because John was thinking of Bonnie and Joe, right? So Tommy, Tommy and Gina. And that's how Tommy and Gina were born. Incredible. And it has become a, a literal anthem, hasn't it? It's, it's one of those songs that have stood the test of time. And you go in a nightclub today and they'll still play. It's just a huge, huge anthemic song. Uh, I have um, a friend who's an astrophysicist who has a company that makes um, um, a kind of piece of, of equipment that's on the space station. And we met in Greece um, a few summers ago and he engraved on this this piece of equipment that measures all the radiation that gets inside the the space station and it says halfway there living on a prayer with our initials on it so we made it out into space how cool is that that is very cool very cool indeed 